And I will just, because it is the top of the hour already, so I will say thank you to all of our sponsors, including our platform sponsor, Equinox, our captioning sponsor, the Evergreen Community Development Initiative, uh, as well as Kipu, who's uh, sponsoring the Hackfest tomorrow. And I will put the live captioning links in the chat here in just a second. I am so happy to introduce Elizabeth Davis, Taryn McKenna, Courtney Brown, and Daniel, I should have confirmed the pronunciation of your last name before we started, and I did not. I apologize. Uh, no, I'm kidding. It's Guarchino. <laughs> Guarchino. Okay. Daniel Guarchino. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and I will stop screen sharing, assuming one of you would like to take over. Yep, that'll be me. Okie dokie. Well, thank you, Katie, for the introduction. And um, I feel very um, honored to be following the uh, <laughs> Ruth and Andrea show. So thank you all for sticking around. Um, we're going to be talking about running support desks uh, for Evergreen. Uh, so we'll be talking a lot about not necessarily evergreen, but all the things that we use to support it. So let's get started. So we have a quick agenda, just some basic uh, things that we'll be talking about because we only have about 50 to 60 minutes. Um, so as Katie said, my name is Elizabeth Davis. I am the pro excuse me, support and project management specialist for uh, PALES. Uh, we have one catalog. Our policies are set at the system level for the individual libraries, uh, but we also have Spark level or consortia level policies that kind of act as falters in case we're missing any. We have over or roughly 234 organizational units. We have limited resource sharing with, but with multiple sets of resource sharing groups. And we also use the beloved fourth org unit tier which I know a lot of people <laughs> don't use, but we do. Um, we have a chili pack overlay with synthetics for additional content. And we just recently started using message B for um, SMS notice delivery. And I did forget to include that we are piloting an in-sip connection with our local um, statewide uh, ILL resource, um, ILL program. Um, for our support team, um, we are hosted by Equinox, so they provide tier two support. Uh, and then uh, Katie, Catherine, and I provide a tier one support. And um, the libraries themselves uh, communicate to us directly. Either they have an IT team or an ILS team that uh, provides support, like their tier one <laughs> support, uh, or you know, individual library staff members contact us, or we have projects with the uh, Spark users group. So we have a, a variety of uh, ways that people provide support. I'll hand it over to Taryn. Hi, uh, my name is Taryn McKenna. I'm the Pines Program Manager for the Pines Consortium in Georgia, which was the birthplace of Evergreen. Uh, Pines covers almost all of Georgia, except for the Atlanta and Columbus metro areas, which you see in white there. Um, we're broken up into 51 regional library systems, covering 146 counties out of the 160 in Georgia. Uh, we have around 300 branches and service outlets, um, uh, 12 million items in our collection, and 2.4 million active patrons. Uh, we have a single shared catalog and a single set of overarching policies and procedures that all member libraries agree to. And we share materials freely throughout the consortium uh, with a statewide courier service. Uh, next slide, please. So our team is a, a little bit larger than some of the other teams because we are self-hosted. Um, we uh, have 10 people, although three of our positions have been open since last summer. So we're very short staffed right now. Um, we're currently hiring for those three. Um, each one of us has our own sort of specialty area, but we all work closely together um, as a unit and we do a lot of cross training and support. Next slide, please. So <laughs> the 
this little confusing chart. Um, we have, I'll start at the bottom. Um, so we have about 2,500 library staff at branches and any one of those people might, or our patrons for that matter, might uh, find bugs or have wish list requests. Um, or problems, you know, in daily support that they need help with, like I don't know how to deal with a negative fail or something like that. They typically will go to their local admin or cat coordinator, depending on what the problem is first. Um, so each one of our regional library systems has a designated local administrator and a designated cat coordinator who are kind of responsible for things happening within their regional system. Um, and then if they're not able to help them with the problem, then they escalate that up to the Pines Help Desk, which um, my team manages. Um, and, you know, we don't completely stop people at the branches from escalating um, or from going directly to us. Um, sometimes that works better that way. Uh, but that's the general flow because we just don't have enough staff to directly support all 2,500 people. Um, all of those people we also encourage to use Launchpad, although a lot of people prefer to go through us um, we're and we're fine with that too. So if they find an actual bug, then we can confirm it and confirm that it's not just a, a um, local configuration issue or a policy issue, and we can re report that to Launchpad for them. The local admins are also generally responsible for anything with their local network, their desktop support, etc. Yeah, each library system has their own vendors for ebook resources and that sort of thing. Um, so they do that at their level. And then at our level, we uh, we are still hosted, but our servers are actually hosted at the University System of Georgia's IT department. Um, so they help us with the actual hardware and firewall and that sort of thing. Um, we also have backup system admin support with Emerald. Um, we handle the contract and troubleshooting with our statewide courier. Uh, we use UMS for uh, notices that need to get mailed out um, and deal with added content and all of the other sorts of things at, at that level. And uh, I'm done with that slide. All right, and this is me. Can everyone hear me all right? Perfect. All right. My name is Courtney Brown. I serve as the systems librarian for the NC Cardinal Consortium. Um, NC Cardinal is a program of the State Library of North Carolina. Um, we were formed in 2010 for the purpose of making um, the combined resources of North Carolina's public libraries available uh, to all people um, of the state through a shared catalog and a statewide library card. Um, our community um, currently consists of 63 counties with six municipalities, seven special libraries, um, which provides around about 223 branch locations. Um, we do have um, advisory committees uh, that we work with, um, so we will get into that a little bit more um, later in the presentation. Um, we have one catalog. Uh, the catalog is maintained by the cataloging committee, which is one of the advisory committees, um, along with the NC Cardinal team. Um, let's see, we also have a local um, system or the local systems, excuse me, um, consist of at least one bibliographic cataloger, an item cataloger, and then um, we um, have them to uh, pass two assessments before they are given cataloging permissions. Um, our library, um, our local library systems um, consist of um, a library admin team or staff um, of a system administrator, a system login access manager, a branch admin man manager, and of course the cataloging and circulation staff members. Um, of course, within um, our community, we do provide training um, for our admin staff. Um, we also, in our migrations, which we'll talk about a little bit more as well, we provide circulation and cataloging trainings along with report trainings. Um, our trainings are conducted by our training specialist, Samantha O'Connor, um, which you'll see in a moment, who um, also creates training modules for our library staff um, using the Niche Academy platform. Uh, we set our whole policies um, at the cardinal level, um, and then, of course, we have whole policies um, set at system and branch levels to address the library-specific um, hold policies that may differ from the overall NC cardinal um, policies. Um, we do our 
do a large amount of resource sharing um, within the community. Um, our system, or we require our systems, excuse me, to resource share um, items with the circulation modifier of book, audio book, music, and video. However, systems are allowed to uh, resource share other items if they choose. Um, I will say um, a lot of expensive items like technology items like laptops and things, um, our systems choose not to share, which is understandable. Um, okay, let's see, Elizabeth, if you want to go to the next slide. Okay, uh, we do uh, provide a, a two-tier help desk support structure. Um, the first tier is the NC Cardinal team where we have Benjamin Murphy, um, our program manager, of course, myself, um, Llewellyn Marshall, which is the application administrator and developer. And then we have Samantha O'Connor, which is our training specialist. And I'm William Swaggle. And my apologies if I pronounce mispronounce that last name. I always kind of tear it up a little bit, but the project manager. Um, so we kind of um, take on the um, help tickets that, you know, we get or different issues um, as a team. And then, of course, we do have a tier um, two support, which is Mobius. So anything that we're not able to handle or kind of resolve on our end, we can escalate to support um, or to tier two support. And they're also our hosting vendor. Hi there, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so hi, everybody. My name is Dan Guarachino. I'm the Automation Services Librarian for the OWL Library System. We are um, a little bit different than the other folks that you're hearing from today because we are one of um, about two dozen or so public library systems in the state of New York. So we're not a statewide organization. Um, we just uh, cover four counties in Western New York, just outside of Rochester. Um, we have been with Evergreen since 2010. We added Aspen Discovery in April 2023. Um, we, we do have, you know, a kind of a, a robust governance system where um, we both discuss things internally amongst us at the system, but also have policies that are set by our director's advisory council and in an evergreen advisory committee. Um, so we kind of have like a streamlined policy process. We do have um, pretty much full resource sharing um, for our system. Um, obviously, there are a couple limited exceptions. Um, and when I say resource sharing, I mean, I guess that any patron can go to any other library in the system and be able to check out anything at that library. Um, we do have those exceptions where we do have some items that won't move in delivery, like fragile items or other items that, that might uh, be broken. Um, I didn't put this on the slide, but we just I just wanted to mention that our org unit structure is a little bit weird too. Um, Elizabeth mentioned the four unit structure. We're more a, a two level structure um, where we really just have our system and then our 42 member libraries. Um, we do use a couple uh, couple uh, org units on the third tier to do some weird things, but they're not real org units. They're just uh, there for organizational purposes. Um, and also just to kind of help kind of explain, you know, what the, our system setup is like. Of our 40, 42 member libraries, we have like several who have a, a charter to serve area of only a couple hundred people, and then the largest range to up to like 25 to 30,000 people or so. So we're a fairly small system. Uh, next slide, please. And um, this is uh, just a kind of glimpse at the structure. This isn't all of the staff at the system, um, but this is uh, all of the staff who um, do uh, get tickets. Um, I handle most of the evergreen related tickets, but depending on the content area, um, especially like cataloging, for example, my colleague Catherine um, handles all of those questions. Um, these are all of the folks here on the screen who you uh, who work with tickets and then also our executive director too. Um, and we are also hosted uh, and supported by Equinox. All right, so uh, communication uh, within NC Cardinal and excuse the small screenshots. I did wanna kind of give you a visual of both um, communication platforms. I'm kind of a visual learner, so wanted to share that with you guys. But um, 
for two um, or two types of communication um, platforms of software that we use is uh, Basecamp and HelpSpot. Uh, Basecamp is described and marketed as a program management software tool. However, uh, the State Library um, of North Carolina uses it more as an um, online tool for communication with ex um, external vendors while working on different projects. Um, the NC Cardinal community uh, focuses on using the tool to facilitate communication between the Cardinal um, member libraries, um, the Cardinal team, and of course, uh, the folks at Mobius. Um, the Basecamp software uh, was used to replace our past um, listserv software, so that's kind of, you know, um, how we got into using this, the replace software. Um, users are able to interact with uh, Basecamp groups uh, through the website, logging into Basecamp, and also by responding directly uh, via email. Um, Basecamp uh, or popular Basecamp features that we do use in NC Cardinal um, is the message board, our scheduling, docs and files where we're able to uh, post different documents and share um, among the group or individually, um, and also uh, pings. Uh, we can ping individuals or specific groups directly in a private conversation when needed. Um, so, well, as of now, of course, we can go in and create projects as needed, but as of now, we currently have an acquisitions uh, project or team in Basecamp, one for cataloging staff, one for um, our general discussion, which is kind of there for day-to-day -day questions, um, comments, reports, or um, announcements. We also have one specifically for incidents. So anytime, you know, um, our library staff members are working in Evergreen and they find it slow or something's wrong going on, we can kind of, uh, or staff can kind of go there, or even the Cardinal team can go there and say, hey, you know, we noticed this was going on, we're working with the Mobius, um, and we'll keep you guys posted. Um, so we use that just to kind of report different issues. Uh, we also have a resource sharing base camp team and one for serials and reporting. Um, similar to our help requests, uh, which we'll get into soon, um, library staff are able to complete and submit a form to request access to different base camps. Um, this form is um, is created in Help Spot, which we'll talk about here in a moment, and then linked into our knowledge book. Um, recently, I have worked on a small project with our user experience committee to kind of establish some base camp based practices to assist our library staff with using base camp to produce effective and meaningful communication. So whenever we do use software like this, we do like to have some type of practice into the gu guidelines and also training structures just to kind of help our library staff to, um, you know, um, maneuver through the pro or through the software. Um, effectively. As far as help, um, help spot, um, this is our ticketing system that we use to um, handle our work, um, work requests and um, inquiries um, submitted by library staff to the Cardinal team. Um, the help spot software provides a knowledge book feature um, that we use to display documentation on the use of Evergreen along with, um, you know, guidelines and standards for the NC Cardinal community. Um, it also provides reporting and metric um, features. And um, uh, similar to Basecamp, um, library staff are able to submit uh, help requests using the form submitted there in the help, um, help spot. And again, it's linked in the knowledge book. Uh, so you can go in and use that form or you can um, email us directly um, to our, you know, our help spot um, homepage and we'll grab it from there. So I'll talk very briefly about some of the tools that we use for documentation. We have a platform called OwlDocs um, that uh, uses FossWiki. Um, so it's, you know, as the name suggests, it's a wiki. Um, for ticketing, we use a request tracker, and um, we've been using that for a, a number of years, well before I started at the system in 2020. Um, the big thing that I've been really leaning on recently for communication is our change log. So um, I started this back in 2022. And what it basically is, is almost a, a, a blog kind of squished into wiki format. Um, and, and what we do here is 
we post any updates that library staff need to know about that are related to Evergreen or our discovery layer. Um, and so those updates might be actual Evergreen updates like uh, our um, monthly Sequoia maintenance updates that uh, Equinox uh, performs for us. Um, they could be configuration changes. They could be policy updates too that um, are kind of related to Evergreen but not, aren't necessarily actually within Evergreen. Um, and we put all of these in this one place so that staff can rely, uh, look at this uh, and refer back to it. And then when we do update uh, this, this uh, change log, we will uh, include a note about it in our weekly uh, OWL post newsletter. Um, I also kind of put a little screenshot of the um, uh, what we do on the splash page, which is we have a notices section on the Evergreen splash page so that even if staff aren't necessarily checking email um, and receiving that newsletter, they will still see information about really important updates that they need to know about um, right on the front screen of Evergreen, right on that splash page. And finally, we also discuss any changes um, in our OWL users group meeting. And so that's a group that meets bi-monthly, um, is open to any library staff. And we also record all those meetings and then email out the recording after they are done. Uh, for Pines, uh, we do almost all of our direct staff communication through our help desk. Uh, we use a free open source software product called OS Ticket. Uh, we self-host that, um, and that either allows library staff to log in and submit tickets and see their ticket history and all that sort of thing, or they can simply email in tickets, and if they don't have an account, it will create a guest account for them automatically. Um, it also allows uh, us, depending on their email address, to group them by organization. So we can um, see all of an organization's, by organization, I mean um, like a regional library system. So we can see all of Coastal Plain Regional Library Systems tickets together. Um, and we can also uh, provide access to um, an organization's tickets to other members of that organization and that sort of thing if we uh, want to, and if they want to. Um, we also uh, share this help desk with other agencies within Georgia Public Library Service. So uh, for example, GPLS IT department uses it for all of their um, tickets with libraries too. And they actually support uh, the, the entire state, not just the Pines libraries um, with uh, various um, things. Uh, we're a Google uh, partner, so we, um, provide uh, Google Gmail accounts for um, our for most of our organizations um, and access to other Google services. So um, we actually use uh, Google Groups to manage all of our mailing lists. So that's the second most popular way we communicate with library staff. Um, we have different Google Groups for just general Pines notices. Uh, and then we have Google Groups specifically for um, catalogers and for the executive committee, the subcommittees. Um, we have a special testing group when we get ready for our annual upgrade and that sort of thing. We also do three in-person uh, meetings per year with the library directors. Um, the governance structure we have is that uh, there's a, a, an elected group of library directors uh, that form the executive committee and they make decisions on policies and other governance issues. Um, all of the library directors and subcommittee members, uh, the subcommittee members are made up of library staff, um, provide feedback to the executive committee for their um, decisions. Uh, we use DocuWiki to manage all of our policies and procedures documentation, um, which allows the, our entire team to easily provide updates to whatever needs to be updated in there. And then we provide online training through Niche Academy. Uh, we use ScreenPal to do our screen recording to, to uh, include with the Niche, Niche Academy courses. And then we do uh, some amount of training live through Google Meet online 
Uh, we used to do a lot more training in person uh, prior to COVID and prior to training budgets uh, getting cut like they are everywhere. Um, but uh, we've transitioned almost everything online at this point, which is great because it allows us to record and make them accessible to people that aren't able to attend in person. Next slide, please. Sorry, I couldn't find the button. <laughs> uh, so for Pales, our communication is mainly through, um, we have uh, Atlassian products. Uh, so we use the Jira service management for tickets and bug tracking. We loved canned responses. Those, so if any of our uh, member library staff are here and you're like, why do all these responses sound the same? It's because I use a canned response and I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we love forms. We recently started using a lot of embedded forms for a lot of common workflows, and that has really um, helped streamline a lot of requests. Um, so we're really happy with that integration. We use their Confluence for our knowledge book pages, uh, and we're looking into using them also for all of our certification programs. Um, I have to figure out how to make the quizzes work, but uh, that's, that's a project for this summer. Uh, and then we also use their Atlassian product, which is a customer service or customer um, management software. Since we do bill our libraries for um, support in hosting, um, we do need a way to keep track of everyone, but it also lets us keep track of which, which people work at which libraries or who work at multiple locations. So when they do put in support tickets, we can kind of keep track of, you know, staff member Bob is putting in a request for this library, but he also works at these other three libraries. So we know, okay, well, if it, we're making a change for Bob here, do we need to make the change for those other locations as well? So it's really nice to see where everyone works. Um, we do have a users group um, and we have individual subcommittees for cataloging reports, ILL, circulation, and they meet quarterly. And we have a large user group meeting uh, annually uh, that we do online. We used to do it in person, but like Taryn is also mentioning, it is easier to do it all online. You, we get a greater attendance and we do get to be able to record all of the, the educational opportunities. So that has, you know, if we have to say there's a perk to COVID, <laughs> that was one of them. Uh, we also have a pretty heavily used listserv. We use that a lot. Uh, we find that, uh, everyone feels more comfortable sending an email out to the listserv than um, you know, joining a group or anything like that. So we're really happy with that. And we started using a, a mail email newsletter service to kind of streamline some of our, our official communications. But I may, <laughs> I may steal Dan's idea of using uh, the splash page for the notices for really important stuff. So uh, I hope you don't mind. That's a really great idea. So for communication, that's that's for us at Pales. And we're gonna move on to special projects. Okay, um, I uh, this was just kind of a, a added on slide. Um, uh, on our team, we also manage, um, or a lot of work I should say is very project-based. So we do, a, you know, a lot of the help desk work is, is uh, you know, the same, types of things uh, day by day uh, for support tickets, but then we also do a lot of project-based work. Um, the biggest one being that our annual upgrade, which we treat like a project. Um, so we actually take about two months in preparation for the upgrade. We set up a test server with the version that we intend on going to and a copy of our complete production data and configuration at that time. Um, so it's as close to live as possible. Um, and then we uh, give all of the library staff access to that server, along with some guidelines um, on how to do testing and assurances that they can't mess up anything, <laughs> that they should try to break it. Um, and we do ask for participation by staff at all levels. Um, anybody that interacts with the software at all, we want to know what their workflow is um, because we can't test every single possible workflow um, out there on our little team. So we ask for participation by staff at all the, all the locations at all the different levels. 
And then we use Google Forms and Google Sheets to track the feedback. Uh, any bugs that are identified, um, we will report them to Launchpad, which for anybody that doesn't know is the community like bug tracking and wishlist tracking um, website. And then we'll try to fix as many as we can internally as we have skill for as well. That's it for me. And I'm going to mute myself. All right. So uh, one project that I wanted to discuss today was um, our migration project or our migration process. Um, this is a 12-week process we use to migrate new libraries into the consortium. Uh, we started handling uh, our migration in-house uh, with assistance from Mobius in 2019. So you can see in our top map, um, 2019, you know, the different uh, counties of North Carolina that we uh, covered in the community versus where we are now in 24-25. Um, in the map, you can see there are two um, counties shaded, shaded in blue. Those are the two counties um, that we are migrating this year. Um, Let's see, we do hold um, a call each week for about an hour and a half um, covering the different topics. Um, here I've kind of broken down a brief uh, timeline of the 12 week activities or the activities that we cover in the 12 weeks. So um, on each call, uh, we go in with an agenda on handling, you know, um, information on library settings and confirming that Mobius has a copy of their current ILS data to begin working with um, to migrate into our testing um, um, servers. Um, and then we go into um, data mapping where we're actually um, going through or taking a fine to fine to comb and going through all of uh, their records and their items and merging them into um, our evergreen ILS. Um, also making sure that they have the most appropriate circulation policies and whole policies. Um, we're also taking time to um, provide a circulation training, which is a full day for all of our library staff. Um, and then we have um, a follow-up day of cataloging training that's breaking into broken into two sessions, one specifically for item catalogers and then one um, specifically for staff who will be working with bibliographic um, cataloging and, and working with records. Um, Let's see, we uh, kind of, you know, go through um, everything um, into week nine, where we're actually having the process of going live into the Evergreen. So they're, I mean, into the Evergreen ILS. So they're actually um, logging into the live production server and um, kind of, you know, working with the catalog and other um, library systems. Um, we also follow up um, just to answer any calls or address, um, I'm sorry, to answer any questions or address any concerns that, um, um, library staff may have um, may have or may have found, you know, after that first week of being live in the L um, ILS. And then, of course, we uh, follow up with some training um, used for using the reporting module, along with simple reports, um, and then transitioning and transitioning. Look, sorry, transitioning into help spot, which means which means that um, we will no longer use the um, base camp project that we specifically created for the migration, but begin to have them to submit help tickets through help spot and kind of help continue um, helping and maintaining their um, work requests uh, through that software instead of base camp. So um, yeah, this is just um, you know sharing that process with you. Um, so for pails, our, our bug tracking, uh, when I started, we were kind of keeping things on a spreadsheet and it got a little unwieldy. We really couldn't keep track of you know, how many tickets. It was a lot of like back and forth. So um, since we migrated to JIRA for our uh, support desk, uh, we found a, um, a Python script that will create a JIRA ticket or instance um in our issue excuse me issue in our we have a special we have different programs within our support desk so we have a, a project just called a bug's life it is yes related to the um the, the animated film a bug's life um so when we encounter a bug that uh, uh 
the library has reported. We uh, go out, we run this uh, Python script on our virtual machine. It goes out, it grabs all of the info from Launchpad, pulls it into the bug, a Bugs Life project and creates an issue for it. And uh, what we do is we associate all future bugs or past bugs to, um, or issues from the libraries to that specific uh, bug and periodically we'll go through and we'll run um, reports and it'll go out, grab all of the current statuses of those bugs that we have in our, our project, A Bug's Life, and we can match up how many actual tickets to um, specific bugs. And then from that, we kind of drive our um, development process. So we usually um, add heat, we'll, um, submit it for uh, Equinox's AIM process. We will submit them to the ECDI, what we're members of, for um, the prioritization. And then um, we also look at them for uh, individual funded um, uh, development projects. This is just like a, a real messy screenshot of what it looks like. So you can see, you know, this uh, patron self-registration form needs a CAPTCHA. We have got a ton of bugs tickets on that. So that would be something that we prioritize um, in future um, development. So um, I do have the GitHub uh, link if you need it. Um, and Katie can explain more of the Python scripting <laughs> if you're interested. Um, she graciously fixed that for us. So um, I think ultimately one day it would be really awesome if we could have the current status in JIRA. But for now, it's just reporting and matching things up and it takes like five minutes. So um, yeah, we're really, really happy with how it's working so far. Was there a rock, paper, scissors decision between a bug's life and ants? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think Kat picked a bug's life, so we'll have to ask her. Um, I mentioned it a little bit already, um, but uh, we do have um, different working groups and subcommittees. Um, our executive committee is uh, made up of regional library system directors that serve three-year terms and serve as the policy governing board. Anytime a proposal uh, for a policy change comes in, it goes through a standard review process um, with feedback submitted by the Pine subcommittees. The subcommittees are made up of frontline staff for the most part. Um, who are nominated by their regional director to serve on the committees. And then they uh, present, or then they provide all the feedback to us. We compile it um, and present it to the executive committee for the final decisions. We also put together working groups for specific projects, um, such as um, last year, we did a complete overhaul of all of the automated emails that we sent out through action triggers to HTML eyes them and make them pretty. Um, and so we convened a working group for a few months to go over all of the, you know, the visuals as well as the wording that we wanted to include on all of those. I'll turn it over to MC Cardinal. So MC Cardinal um, currently has uh, three advisory um, or working groups. The governance committee uh, is used to um, pretty much govern the consortium, um, assist us in setting um, appropriate policies and standards for the community to abide by. Um, then we have the cataloging committee, which um, assists in maintaining our catalog. Um, they help to establish practices and standards, um, and they also assist in some of our um, cataloging up projects. Um, and then we have the user experience committee um, who assist in addressing um, concerns or projects um, related to frontline um, experience or um, workflows. Talk a little bit about our um, kind of governance stuff too. Um, so we have our uh, OWL users group, which I guess isn't technically part of our governance structure, but a lot of things that get brought to um, EAC or OWL DAC. Those are the abbreviations I have here. Um, we're librarians, so we have to use our acronyms. Um, so a lot of a lot of the the policy updates 
often end up originating in our um, OWL log, our, our users group, um, because they are often the frontline staff who are um, dealing with issues, end up bringing concerns to us either at the meeting or via tickets. And then eventually that gets brought to um, our advisory committees to um, be discussed and uh, adopt a policy if necessary. Um, so as far as actual policy making, um, we do have our Evergreen Advisory Committee. Um, it's a group of um, mostly directors, a few non-directors as well, uh, who um, meets uh, every other month and um, kind of discusses policy, works out um, some of the kinks, and then eventually brings policy proposal to our full um, director's advisory council, which is made up of all of our library directors. Um, something that we've been trying to do recently is to kind of take a lot of those um, quasi policies that exist out there or um, things that have kind of previously been recommendations and maybe like things that were discussed at meetings sometime in the past couple of years or sometimes even five to 10 years ago um, and we're kind of adopted as, oh, this is how we should be doing things that have kind of gotten lost in the process of, as we've had turnover in system staff or turnover at um, the libraries as well. Kind of taking those um, quasi policies and trying to formalize them. Um, so that's, that's kind of been something that has been a big focus of what I've been trying to do um, working with our um, Ed Evergreen Advisory Committee and our Director's Advisory Council. I mentioned before that a lot of the work we do is project-based. Um, so the projects aren't necessarily things that we just manage on our own. Um, some of them we are, but there are, but most of the projects that we do involve uh, library buy-in and participation. So for example, if we need to do a data cleanup project, we might run the initial reports and identify what needs to be cleaned up, but then we'll rely on the libraries to actually participate to do much of that cleanup, except for anything that can be batch processed by us. Um, an example is parts. Um, we were kind of a late adopter to parts, but we rely on them really heavily now. So our team with feedback by uh, the catalogers um, developed standards, kind of a controlled vocabulary for how parts should be used. And then we expect the libraries to follow those standards. Um, and because we don't do it, the cataloging ourselves, the libraries do that for their own materials. Um, and then there are, if there are issues with that, then those issues come back to us for resolution. Um, I think that's all I had for my section. Okay. For PALES, we, we do a lot of projects uh, managed by us as staff, and then with the assistance of libraries, staff, uh, or system staff, and or the users group. Some examples are, you know, bib deduplication. We work with the cataloging committee to set up uh, the standards. They, um, they're the folks that set up the cataloging standards and the trainings. So we work with them exclusively to make sure that the bibliographic records are the way they want them. Um, conversely, we have a permissions group project that we're doing now for the reports permissions. We rolled out acquisitions earlier uh, this year. So that's something that exclusively we as staff are working on, but we have uh, library staff members who we have to contact and update and get um, lists of people who should have those permissions. And then later this year, we're going to be aging circulation and auto deleting patrons. So um, we worked exclusively with our, our board as well as a users group to make sure that we are um, not aging or deleting people with fines and things like that. So that um, for any of the libraries that have specific uh, fiduciary responsibilities, that we're not getting rid of anything that they need for other reporting purposes.
Okay, so um, as far as projects or uh, special projects in NC Cardinal, um, our projects uh, are established according to our community need or requests discovered while addressing help tickets or from communications and base camps in our annual meetings. Um, projects are managed uh, by NC Cardinal staff with assistance from um, related advisory committees and system library staff. Um, quickly, a few notable projects was our whole targeted project. Uh, which Llewellyn Marshall of the Cardinal team presented on last year and followed up on the project um, yesterday with the presentation signed, sealed, and delivered, um, whole target of geolocation follow-up. Um, so that was a big one. Um, we've also, um, like uh, Taryn and Elizabeth, um, completed a patron permission cleanup along with several cataloging cleanup projects. Um, the one project that I want to focus on here was the library settings project in April 20, um, 2022. We kicked off a library settings project, which is a project um, where we consulted with our member libraries to review their current library settings. Uh, this project stemmed from the process we use for our library, library migrations, uh, where we talk through all of Evergreen's um, variety of setting options that may be useful to the libraries um, to have, um, you know, um, or um, they could find it useful, you know, if the libraries have been in NC Cardinal for a while. So just taking the opportunity to review um, any new settings that have that may have been added um, during the recent upgrade, or um, also, you know, finding settings that just were not um, used whenever they first came into Cardinal, whether it was just the change in admin staff or different situations. So we thought it was good just to have everyone to review the settings like our newly incoming um, systems uh, do. Um, the participation for this project is um, optional and typically um, libraries do nominate a few um, library staff uh, to work on this um, project. Um, there, again, are a large number of settings, so we did break them down into categories, um, which was uh, general financial cataloging, holds, patron, and um, OPAC, and then long overdue evergreen printing and credit cards. Um, the goal for this project were to clean up any existing consortium-wide or system-specific settings, so we were able to kind of uh, take a look at the database and see kind of uh, or get an overall view of what everyone was using. And if it was something where we found all, you know, libraries were using, instead of using a specific system level setting, we could bump it up to a consortium level so everyone can use that setting. Um, also, we wanted to increase understanding of the available settings and then just make sure that Evergreen was working the way that the library system wanted, wanted you know, Evergreen to work for them and their current workflows. So we have three minutes. So if there's any questions, um, we'd love to hear them. I know we've gotten a few you know, in the chat. Um, Dan, do you want to share your screen for your notices while we wait for questions? I'm going to try to upload a switch I took. Um, let's see if it works, maybe. Um, did that? work oh actually there we go it's really small there so i don't know if that actually worked if you want me to try to share my screen um i'd be happy to i think i would just need to be made a co-host you should be able to share without being a co-host you should see the green oh, okay. button at the bottom oh look at that all right perfect um so let me go ahead and do that then let's see so but also if you click on the little tiny um, screenshot in chat, it does open up in a new window, at least if you're using the Zoom version. So this is how it looks like. I, I'm assuming you guys can see my screen now. Um, it's just kind of slapped on at the bottom left there. Um, but, you know, we update it with with links. Um, I don't know if any of our friends from Equinox are here. We actually funded um, this development. I don't remember which version it was included in, um, but this was something that OWL funded, not with this intention. Um, it was actually uh, just so that we could continue to have our splash screen customized. So this was kind of a little like happy accident of like a bonus thing that that we started doing um, with having these notices here. And, um, you know, since we can link, um, you can see here that if I hover over this, 
it would allow me to link to that page that we have on our um, documentation wiki. Um, so it's a, a fun thing to do. I did want to mention, um, Aaron, uh, he had a, a comment in uh, chat about phone calls, um, and we didn't really talk about that. Uh, we used to, when we, you know, pre-COVID, when we're in the office all the time, um, we used to get a lot more phone calls, but we've really tried to transition most libraries into using the help desk um, and to get away from personal phone calls and individual emails. Um, any emails that come in, we just forward to the help desk. And uh, we do try to make an attempt to record phone calls in the help desk too, but you know, <laughs> depending on how busy we are, that gets lost sometimes. But, you know, if as long as it's in the help desk, then all of us that need to access the history of communications with that library will have access to it, um, whereas that get, gets lost if it's just by email or uh, phone call. So we do make a make a big effort to channel that all through the help desk. I see Elizabeth said in chat, she has a similar way to track that in JIRA as well. Yeah, we've gotten everyone kind of used to emailing the help desk, but you know, sometimes they don't think it's an official question. It's like, well, any question is an official <laughs> question. So please email me because sometimes I go on vacation and Katie can't read my email. <laughs> so exactly. Uh, and often I'll email the wrong person. Yeah, for time situation or time purposes, I will just say, yes, everything that Taryn said <laughs> um, also stands true for NC Cardinal. Um, we try to move everything to help ticket, um, whether it's email, phone call, for tracking purposes. Also, whenever we're able to look at the end of the year on, hey, what did we, you know, do? How did we fix it? Or, or what things did we kind of work on? We're able to go back and, you know, use those metrics and see and kind of keep everything yeah. wrinkled together. Yeah, statistics is a really good point um, that we didn't really talk about is we always need to justify <laughs> the, yeah. our budget. And we handle our bug tracking there, you know, through our help tickets as well. If someone finds a bug, you know, we'll help them um, try to identify or if, you know, if there's something that needs to be created, we can kind of help from that ticket to go in and, and report a bug or go from there. So we kind of track as of now, you know, through the help, help, Ticket, but uh, Elizabeth's um, and um, you know their, I guess their setup is something that we're really um, interested in. So kind of looking at how they have that a book's life set up. Is there any other questions or thoughts that people have? I, since we have a, a hot minute, I will say that there's two parts, and Elizabeth mentioned this, to what we use for the bug tracking. There's a, an open source project that we we borrowed from another place that does the JIRA integration, but uh, the, the Python script that pulls the launchpad info um, is is just a Python script that I wrote using the, the launchpad API. So um, I can... I, I can put that on GitHub if anybody does want it. You have to then do your own crosswalk back with the tickets, um, but it tracks everything by bug number. So that's that's nice and it gives you kind of the updated info. This was delightful to hear from everybody about what they're doing. Yeah, Katie, if you put that on the, um, if you put that on GitHub, I can put it in the slide. Okay, yeah, I just have slides. to, I think it's actually on there, but uh, that I've worked on it since then. So I'll make sure the current version is up and then we can put that link in the slides. Awesome. Well, thank you all for coming and thanks to Gail and for this great idea. We talked about this bug tracking thing a year ago and we got it working and he's like, why don't you tell everyone about it? So, so we did. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks to Elizabeth for wrangling us, too. Oh, <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you for you. volunteering to <laughs> serve. <laughs> All right. It looks like we have uh, our uh, 
break slash exhibitor time until 2.30 and then uh, Eastern, that is, and then lightning talks uh, in half an hour. So I hope everybody has a great rest of the conference.